Hello, everyone. Deacon Dan, good to join you here uh, to reflect on the readings for this coming Sunday. We have uh, sh three short readings this Sunday, and that's kind of nice. Less to chew on, but it's a lot to chew on. And I just want to remind everyone uh, that we know that the church chooses, or that the, the uh, gospel and the second reading from the New Testament are both on a cycle, typically. And it's the first reading and the psalm that are actually chosen. And that's, that there's usually a connection uh, when they choose between the gospel or the second reading. So keeping that in mind. Uh, I'm going to be saying some things, but I would uh, encourage you, when you encounter the scriptures yourself, um, to just be open to what the Lord is saying to you particularly. I know I encounter the scriptures, and I'll, have, I'll, I'll share a few things to you, but uh, be attentive to what perhaps the Lord is saying to you. What a great thing that you're listening, that you are encountering the scriptures, and that you're listening to what the Lord is saying personally to you. I think what I found when I looked at the first reading in the gospel was a link. And the, the first reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. It's about uh, a king that will come riding on an ass on a colt. And he's going to uh, banish the chariot and the warrior's bow and his dominion shall be set from sea to sea. Well, it's a prophecy. And of course, in the gospel, the prophecy is fulfilled because we see our Lord riding meek and humble on an uh, ass into Jerusalem. Uh, the gospel talks about uh, finding rest for ourselves, that God is meek and humble of heart, Jesus is, and his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So there's a strong connection there. And I think the connection I found was a four-letter word, and that is the word meek, M-E-E-K, meek. What does meek mean? It doesn't mean another four-letter word called wimp. I, a lot of us, when we think about meekness, uh, we think of someone who, who is very wimpy, uh, perhaps. Uh, that's how the word has come to, uh, for us to understand. But when, when the scripture talks about meekness, as you probably are well aware, it, it means strength under control. It means someone who's strong, but whose strength is actually under control. And I thought I had a conversation with the family about um, an incident that happened with our cops. And, and you know, our cops and our police force is under fire these days, and, 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 and we know that Strength under control or meekness is really required for our police force these days. And occasionally there are some failures. And we were talking about one of the failures, a situation you probably heard about where um, a gentleman falls asleep at a fast food drive through And the uh, 911 call says, hey, can, can you please come over? Uh, we can't wake him up. So the police come. They, they wake this guy up, they start talking to him, um, and it's a great conversation, it's all happening on film, and then they decide to uh, have him blow a test to see if he's under the influence, and sure enough, it comes back, he's at .10 or something like that. And at a certain point, the cop starts arresting them. And when the cop starts arresting them, that triggers a reaction by this guy, and he's a big, strong guy, and he uh, um, resists, and there's big, you know, another cop joins, and there's big fray and fight that goes on, and, and they're trying to taser him, but then he grabs the taser away, and he starts running away. And as he starts running away, the cop pulls out his gun, and he shoots him three times, kills him. So we see meekness in my opinion, not being displayed in this particular instance where both the man who was being arrested triggered this violent reaction, the resistance to arrest, but also in the policeman, why did he need to fire those three shots? Granted, the man 
had taken the taser at that point and pointed it towards them, but he was a good distance away and he was running away. Why did the police need to shoot? Meekness is strength under control. And I'm sure the cop felt very threatened at that point. And it was probably the safest thing to shoot for him. He was protecting himself. But it was not the right thing to do. It was not under control. And we see our Lord Jesus riding meek and humble on an ass into Jerusalem, into danger. And that and meekness involves at times resisting the use of our strength when there is danger around or using our strength when danger is around, but prudence governing that. And it's closely allied to the virtue. Meekness is closely related to fortitude, which is the ability to undergo suffering on behalf of the good. But policemen are in uniform. And you've probably heard that women like men who are in uniforms. And they are attracted to a man who is in a uniform. Why? I think it's because a uniform symbolizes meekness. It symbolizes the powers and strength of a man under control in the service of another. Ordered power. And I think women are attracted to that. They're attracted to power that, that a man possesses, but this power enlisted in their service and enlisted in under obedience to a greater good. So I, I would offer the question for you as you think about this four letter word meekness, meek today is, is my strength under control? Is, is, are my powers ordered to the service of another? Whether it's my anger, my other emotions, my sexual powers, are they pointed in the right direction? Are they ordered again to the service of another? Am I in uniform? Am I in a meek position? Because the Lord want us, wants us, especially us men, to have our strength ordered to his service and under control. And that is difficult, but the Lord doesn't call us to anything that we cannot achieve and do. And that ties to the second reading, which just says simply, one of the lines is, you will die if you live according to the flesh. And we know as men and as Christians that we will die if we live according to our flesh, if our strength and our powers are overtaken by the, the flesh. The Lord says that this yoke and this burden that we have is light. He can give us the power we need to use our powers to his kingdom, for his kingdom. So that's what I have to say on these readings. I bet you there's something different, perhaps, that the Lord may lead you to as you encounter these readings. But the Lord, keep in mind that God uses scriptures so powerfully to touch us personally. So until we meet again, I don't know if I'll do another one of these. I probably have talked too, too long. But I wanted to share those thoughts with you, with you and hope you have a rich encounter with the scriptures this weekend. God bless you.